To begin creating a purchase order so that you can reorder your stock inventory, you can begin one of three ways. Either by coming up to the orders ribbon at the top and choosing purchase, or by going to the list slash orders folder in the folder tree and choosing stock purchase order from there. Or finally, by simply clicking on the purchase order icon that's located in the life cycle. Once on the stock purchase order form, the first step will be to click the new button in the top right. Once the stock purchase order form loads, at that point you can select an order date by clicking on the drop down menu for the calendar and then selecting that date from the calendar. Next, for the purchase order number, you can either activate a barcode generator that will sit just to the right of the text box for the purchase order and that will create sequential numbers for each new purchase order or if you're typing that purchase order number in, you can just key that in on the keyboard. Once you've typed in or had the purchase order number generated by the system, then you'll select the supplier from where you're going to order from. And that can be done by either typing that supplier name into the text box and having it auto-populate so you can select it. Or you can click the plus button if you do not see the supplier listed there, and that will allow you to add a new supplier. Or you can click the magnifying glass, and that will let you search through a list of available suppliers or search for a specific supplier. Once you've specified the supplier you're going to order from, at that point you can also specify the address where this will be shipped. In this case, we'll specify our receiving warehouse. And then also the expected delivery date, which can be selected from the drop-down menu on the calendar, as well as the due date for this, which again can also be selected from the drop-down on the calendar. The next step at this point is to select the items that you're going to be ordering. This can be done by either clicking into the stock item drop down menu here and typing that in so that you can select it from the list as it auto populates. Or you can simply click the drop down menu and select the item directly from the list. Also, you can add additional items if you need to by clicking the green and white plus button, adding that new stock item into the system, and then ordering it on the purchase order or by clicking through a list of available items that you can get from the supplier by clicking on the magnifying glass, choosing the items you need, and then hitting the select and return button. Also, you can search for the particular item that you're looking for in the search boxes above. You can also view a list of suggested reorder items by clicking on the suggested reorder button, and then the system will look at the minimum on hand as well as the maximum to order any that you currently have in inventory, as well as any that are existing on a purchase order that has already been created. From that, it will provide to you, based on the unit of measure that you receive by, how many you need to fulfill that maximum quantity. Once you've found the items that you'll need from the list, you can select the checkboxes for them, and then choose the Select and Return button. Next, you'll specify the quantities that you're receiving for each of these items. And you can see here it will calculate the cost for those items and apply that to the purchase order here. You can decide whether the item is taxable or not, and you can also set up a default tax rate in the system preferences if you needed to do so. Now if there's any documentation that needs to be added to this purchase order, you can click on the Documents tab, and in here you can select the Document drop-down menu, select the documentation you'll need from the list, and then click Add to put that in there or if the documentation isn't in the list, you can click the plus button and then hit select to browse your computer for that documentation. If you need to look through a list of current documentation in the system, you can click the magnifying glass, scroll through the list and select it by choosing the select and return button, or search for that specific documentation and then choose the select and return button from there. Also, if there's any notes that you need to make about this particular purchase, you can do so on the Notes tab on the purchase order itself. Once you've completed filling out the purchase order, the next step is to save it. And we can see now that the purchase order has been generated, and we see the items listed on that purchase order on the screen above. To create any new purchase orders, just click the New button and follow that same process. Or, if you need to edit an existing purchase order, click the Edit button, make the changes that you'll need, and then click the Update button. If you need to print the purchase order, simply click the Print button, and here we can see the printed purchase order, including the purchase order number we created, the ship to address, 
the supplier from whom we're ordering from, as well as the items we're ordering, the individual unit prices, and the total overall price. You can also email these purchase orders by clicking the email button, choosing the format that you'll need from the pop-up window, and clicking the email button on the pop-up window. Here we can see that the purchase order has now been attached to my Outlook email client, and I can send it off from here. If you need to apply a specific format, there is a report set up within our reporting section that will allow you to configure how you want that purchase order to look, and then from there you'd hit the Format button, choose the format from the drop-down menu, and then select OK. Also, while on the stock purchase order screen, if you want to see all purchase orders, whether they're open or closed, you can click the Show All Radio button, and that will list any purchase orders that have been created in Passport. Or, if you want to see a list of purchase orders that have been closed out, choose the Show Closed radio button, and that will show just the purchase orders that have been closed.